In this video, we're going to go over capacitors. Capacitors is a circuit element that consists of two parallel conducting plates separated by a vacuum or an insulating material. The insulating material is also called a dielectric. Now at first, we're going to assume that there isn't an insulating material, that there's a vacuum, and later we'll incorporate the insulating material. So since this is a circuit element, it does have a circuit diagram, which is two parallel plates. And unlike a battery, the two plates are of the same length. Now, the reason why capacitors are important is because they're capable of storing charge and the two plates can store opposite charge. So one plate can store positive charge and the other plate can store negative charge. And there's an equation for the amount of charge that can be stored on a capacitor and that is Q equals CV. Now, within this equation, Q is the charge stored on the capacitor, V is the voltage across the capacitor. Now, the fact that one plate can store positive charge and another plate can store negative charge means there's a potential difference across the capacitor, and that's the voltage of the capacitor. So last, we have C. C is called the capacitance, and we're going to discuss very soon what the capacitance is. Now, the other part is, if a capacitor is capable of storing a potential difference, it can store a voltage, and a voltage can be used to produce electrical current. So essentially, a capacitor, if charged, can serve the same function as a battery. So that means that the capacitor can also store electric potential energy. We have an equation for this. The potential energy stored on a capacitor is equal to one half QV. Now, there are other variants of this equation. For instance, if you use this Q equals CV equation, then potential energy is also one half CV squared. Or if you rearrange for voltage, voltage is Q over C, then you can also get that potential energy is Q squared over two C. So any of these three equations are fine to use to calculate the potential energy stored on a capacitor. All right, so now let's talk about capacitance. So capacitance describes how much charge can be stored for a given voltage. In a sense, it's like a constant because if you think about it on a capacitor plate, the more charge you store on the two plates, the greater the voltage, the greater the potential difference. So C, the capacitance, is essentially the proportionality constant between these two variables. Now, the capacitance is not a fixed constant though. Similar to resistance, you can build different capacitors with different capacitances. And we have these different variables that determine the capacitance of each capacitor. First of all, you have K, or kappa. This is the dielectric constant. What you need to know about the dielectric constant is that it has a value equal to one for a vacuum. So right now, we're assuming that our capacitor plates have a vacuum in between, so you can essentially ignore it. It's one. However, when you add a dielectric, all dielectrics are going to have a dielectric constant that is greater than one. So essentially, the purpose of a dielectric is to increase the capacitance of a capacitor. Now, these other variables, epsilon naught, this is the permittivity of free space. This is a constant that you fortunately do not have to have memorized for them, cat. so we're not gonna write out its value. A is the area of one conducting plate. So you can see from this equation that the capacitance is directly proportional to the area of one conducting plate. And this should make sense because the larger the plates, the more charge you can store on those plates. And then D is the distance between the plates. So what you can see here is the capacitance is inversely proportional to the distance between the plates. So if the capacitor plates are pulled farther apart, 
you have a lower capacitance. You cannot store as much charge for the same voltage. And that's because if you think about it, when you're separating charges, separating positive charges from negative charges on the two plates, that's an unfavorable process, right? Positives and negatives, they attract, they want to be brought close together. So the smaller the distance between the plates, the more charge you can store on the two plates and the greater the capacitance. Okay, so to see how this works, we can go ahead and draw a graph where we're going to look at charge on the y-axis and voltage on the x-axis. Now charge you recall as units of coulombs, voltage has units of volts, which is also a joule per coulomb. If you think about the equation for charge stored on a capacitor, Q equals CV, then based on this graph, we should get a linear line, right? So this line right here is uh, Q equals CV. And on this graph, we have a slope. So the slope of this graph is capacitance. So you can then take a look at this graph and say, okay, if my voltage is this value, this is how much charge I can store for a given voltage. And to better understand how this works, we can go ahead and draw the graph for another capacitor with a higher capacitance. So here's another capacitor. And here, you can see it has a greater slope. So that means it has a higher capacitance. And what you can see on this graph is, if you were to look at one particular voltage value, so if this is the voltage value you're interested in, this is how much charge you could store on the capacitor of lower capacitance. And for the same capacitor, or sorry, for the same voltage, you can see how the one with the greater capacitance can store more charge for the same voltage. Okay, so again, capacitance is a measure of how much charge can be stored for a given voltage. The greater the capacitance, the more charge that can be stored for a given voltage. Okay, so the last thing I want to look at in this video is then talk a little bit about how capacitors work in a circuit. How are capacitors able to store charge? So the first thing we're going to look at is here we have a capacitor connected to a battery. So that means the capacitor has some capacitance C and the battery is supplying some voltage, voltage of the battery. So what happens if we connect these two together? Well, at the beginning, initially, the charge on the capacitor is zero, right? So initially, charge on the capacitor is zero. So essentially, Q is equal to zero. And that's just because capacitors are not like batteries. Batteries essentially have a built-in voltage from the electromotive force. Whereas capacitors, initially, they don't have any charges on the plates. They're neutral. So the charge on the plates is zero. However, if you look at the battery, you're gonna know that one of the plates of the battery is positive and one of the plates of the battery is negative. And again, the positive plate is the big plate and the negative plate is the small plate. If you look at the capacitor plates, they have no charge. So since there is no charge, current is going to be able to flow. And we know that current is going to want to flow, or in this case, we should really talk about the electrons because that's what's actually moving here. Electrons are going to leave this negative plate and they're going to move towards the positive plate. So that means electrons are going to move in this direction. Electrons are going to move counterclockwise, which of course means current is actually moving clockwise. Now, as electrons are leaving this negative terminal of the battery, they're going to start to build up on this bottom plate of the capacitor. So that means on this bottom plate, you're going to start to build up some negative charges. And as electrons move towards the positive terminal, that means electrons are leaving this plate on the top of the capacitor. And as electrons are leaving, it's going to start to build up positive charges. So we can say, as current flows, 
One plate starts to build up negative charges and the other positive charges. So now we can see in this diagram with the capacitor how we're starting to be able to build up a potential difference, a voltage. Essentially just as electrons accumulate on the bottom plate and as electrons leave the top plate, we're building up a voltage. Now this is going to continue, we're going to build up more negative charge, we're going to build up more positive charge. However, this is not going to go on forever and that's because as charge builds up on the capacitor, the capacitor is also developing its own voltage. And at some point, if you look at the circuit, the voltage of the battery is in the opposite direction as the voltage of the capacitor. Right? This capacitor with its negative charges on the bottom plate would want to make electrons move clockwise and make electrons move clockwise towards the positive plate. So at some point, when you have built up so much charge on the capacitor, the capacitor is going to have the same voltage as the battery. And at that point, current stops. So essentially we can say that current flows until the voltage of the capacitor becomes equal to the voltage of the battery. At this point, we see that the capacitor is now charged. Capacitor is now charged. And when it's charged, the amount of charge in the capacitor we can calculate as Q equals CV. But since it's charged, this is the maximum charge on the capacitor. This is equal to the capacitance times the voltage of the capacitor but when the capacitor is fully charged, we know that it has a voltage equal to that of the battery. So, so this essentially tells you that the maximum charge that you can store on a capacitor is equal to its capacitance times the voltage of the battery that it's connected to. Okay, so this is our first video introducing capacitors. So you know that they are a circuit element capable of storing charge and potential energy. And now you have an idea of how when you connect a capacitor to a circuit, how the capacitor is able to store a voltage and electric potential energy.